thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this episode. Click the link in my description for an 83% discount and three free months and stick around till the end to learn more. In the mid 19th century, a sharp rise in nationalism swept across the European elite in response to the largest wave of revolution and political upheaval in European history, an event known as the Springtime of the Peoples. In Hungary, this volatile swell of national pride brought with it intense interest in the country's historical roots and resulted in an unprecedented number of lost medieval documents surfacing. Quick to take advantage of the growing market for these written historical documents, Samuel Literate Nemesh, a Transylvanian-born antiquarian, established his Old Curiosity Shop in Buda in 1835. From the shop, Nemesh sold old coins, printed books, manuscripts, paintings, codices, charters, and even bones to wealthy Hungarian magnates. Besides being a Hungarian nationalist himself, Nemesh was something of a personality. His old curiosity shop rested beneath the form of a massive mammoth skeleton, and Nemesh had gained respect and fame for his discovery of the Massman Tabulae, Roman writing tablets that were, at the time, the only surviving samples known to man and Nemesh would go on to make himself a small fortune by collecting and auctioning off newly discovered and important relics of Hungary's lost past. One of Nemesh's most prominent customers was the Hungarian Count Gustav Batiani, the curator of a vast family library of over 30,000 volumes, which the Count donated in 1838 to the Library of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. Among his donation was a strange and esoteric 448-page leather-bound paper book, thought to be from the 16th century, but in reality was from a largely unknown origin. It was catalogued by Batiani's ancestors nearly 100 years prior as Hungarian prayers in one volume but this proved to be a rudimentary description of a much more complex mystery, for when this book was examined upon its donation, its pages were filled with indecipherable handwritten characters resembling ancient Hungarian runes, alongside 87 crude illustrations, many of which featured famous but slightly altered biblical scenes mixed with iconography from pagan and Islamic traditions. And more than religious depictions, there are portrayals of unidentified leaders and undocumented military conflicts, leading many to suspect that this so-called prayer book might be a key to unlocking a lost chapter of Hungary's past. This book, known today as the Rohonk Codex, after the town in which Batiani's library rested, has captivated and intrigued linguists, historians, and occult researchers alike in the near 200 years since its discovery. Many attempts have been made to decode the unknown script that adorns its pages and to make sense of the bizarre, asynchronistic religious culture presented through the Codex's illustrations. Second only to the Voynich manuscript, the Rohonk Codex has only recently been made accessible to a Western audience, many of whom have devoted years of their life to decoding the mysteries contained within its rough and worn pages. Today we will investigate its seemingly unsolvable puzzles and attempt to unlock the secrets of this possible relic of a lost culture, or perhaps the far darker intentions of its author. Welcome. To Occult Mysteries. The Rohonk Codex is a document like no other. The book itself is relatively small, its pages measuring only 10 by 12 centimeters, or little less than 4 by 5 inches. The Codex is bound in leather, likely a recent edition of the 19th century. Its original page order is unknown and a few dozen leaves of the codex are detached from the binding itself. Adding further to the confusion, 
a portion of the text is suspected to be missing entirely. The handwritten script, although indecipherable, is fairly uniform, the characters of relatively equal size and spacing, leading many to presume a single author. While most pages feature nine lines of text, some will feature as many as 14, and there are no clear indications between what might be letters, words, phrases, or sentences. These character strings feature over 800 unique symbols, 10 times that of any known alphabet, and sometimes overlap and merge with the document's illustrations. Many of the symbols occur rarely throughout the codex, leading academics to speculate that, rather than an alphabet, these symbols might actually be logographs, similar to Chinese, Egyptian, and Mayan scripts. On some pages, there are recognizable Latin characters that do not seem to interact with the rest of the text. Arguments have been made as to whether the symbols should be read left to right as is traditional in Western culture, or whether they take an Eastern influence and are read right to left. Some have read the symbols from the bottom of the page to the top, and even upside down. Experts have attempted to link the runic symbols to ancient Hungarian, Indian, and Arabic roots, while others claim the symbols create a cipher, or a code created by the scribe to assure that its contents remain hidden. The Rahonk Codex lacks a title page, and the illustrations within are rather rough and poorly drawn with the author only able to create simple figures that lack the detail and aesthetic characterized by other Western medieval documents, making it obvious that the scribe had no formal training. Some images seem to be purely ornamental in design, often hiding what seems to be mistakes in the text. A watermark also appears on the pages in the form of an encircled anchor beneath a star and the paper has been dated to the mid-16th century and Venetian in origin. The almost cartoon-like illustrations appear to depict rather recognizable Christian iconography, such as the Crucifixion of Christ, the Flagellation, the Disappearing Feet, Ascension, King David worshipping God Yahweh, the Binding of Isaac, the harrowing of hell, the adoration of the magi, and many others. However, they are intermixed with astronomical symbols such as crescent moons, stars, and the sun, as well as partial swastikas, blending the iconography with features more closely related to Islamic and pagan religions. This odd intermixing of religious iconography has led to much speculation about whether the Rahonk Codex may have been a product of a lost society where Christian, Muslim, and pagan religions shared a peaceful coexistence, or if all three traditions had merged into a new religious structure that has since been lost to time. Scholars also theorize that the use of symbols from a variety of religions might have a deeper coded meaning similar to the encoded text, meant to be understood by only a select few who are trained to recognize the significance of the encoded symbols. The mysteries of the Rahonk Codex have stumped experts and amateurs alike, who in the past 20 years have obsessively attempted to decode the text as a microfilm copy of the codex has been made readily available on the internet. Many occult researchers have questioned the enigmatic symbols and illustrations that, at times, seem to purposefully contradict biblical accounts. Particularly, there is an unexplainable mystery as to why the author of the Rahonk Codex seems to be obsessed with mirroring Consider how the text, though of a Western origin, is almost definitely written right to left, which is a characteristic of the East. And most importantly, the reversement of written depictions of the Tetragrammaton, the Hebrew name for God, Yahweh. Look closely and you will see for yourself. Why would the author do this? 
The answer may lie in esoteric forms of Christianity, where mirroring is a technique used to bring oneself closer to divinity. However, the far darker alternative is that of an occult practice meant to reverse natural order, employing mirrored biblical imagery and text to invoke powerful Hebrew magic. In this case, the scribe may have been seeking powers beyond those of which a human is capable, and the coded script was meant to conceal this dangerous intention. And there is, again, the possibility of a forgotten utopia once nestled in medieval Hungary that practiced a single blended faith in complete peace. This may not be as ridiculous as it seems, particularly when considering that biblical scenes traditionally depicting acts of violence have been purposefully subdued by the author, such as the Massacre of the Innocents, the Flagellation, the Last Judgment, and most notably a representation of Christ's crucifixion with Longinus kneeling in worship aside the Spear of Destiny. Rather than to show Longinus in remorse for piercing Christ with the spear, typical medieval art would highlight the blood spilling from the wound between Christ's ribs. However, the Rahant Codex shows no blood, and the visual almost leads us to take pity on Longinus for his actions. Does this unique and contrarian imagery possibly hint at a culture that aimed for acceptance of one's mistakes? or simply an environment where violence and its depictions were heavily discouraged. A final note is that, though there are several depictions of hell, there is not a single devil to be found within this book, which is extremely odd, being that devil iconography was regularly found throughout Christian cultures in that time period, another hint at isolation. Researchers can only speculate on the identity of the author, the only clues of which are the appearance of the signatures GN and EN, written with the Latin alphabet on the badly water-damaged pages 222 and 223 of the Codex. In contrast to the otherwise stable penmanship, this is the only reason to think that there may be more than one author. And considering the double appearance of the letter N, we may assume a shared surname and relation. However, due to the water damage and the quality of the microfilm, any conclusions drawn are mere ventures into darkness, purposefully held at bay by Hungarian academia. For a long time, studies on the Rahank Codex were only available in Hungarian which hindered progress in cracking the code of the text, thanks in no small part to the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, where the Codex is currently held. They require special permissions for research of the document, and bizarrely, to this day, are completely dismissive of new studies and are adamant that the artifact is nothing more than a forgery. We return back to the owner of the old curiosity shop, Shamuel Literate Nemesh, who had gained quite the reputation for uncovering lost documents that detailed forgotten aspects of Hungary's past. Nemesh got his start in his birthplace of Transylvania, where he worked as a traveling merchant making rounds in a number of small Transylvanian villages, and later to Styria, Croatia and Dalmatia, where he would seek out a variety of antiquities, which he then sold to the Hungarian elite. Nemesh was self-taught, and often shunned the opinions of academics in favor of his own intuition. He captured attention and respect with artifacts such as a letter written by an Ottoman Pasha, a text by Transylvanian prince Janos Kemeni, and a sheet of ancient Chinese characters. More notably though, Nemesh had discovered a staggering number of artifacts associated with Hungary's early roots. These include the wooden book from Turok, the prayers from the time of King Andrew, and the Hungarian picture chronicles, as well as many others, all of which were purported to be from the Dark Ages. 
Nemesh was fortunate to have such luck in his discoveries. Collectors, historians, and philologists were, quite frankly, astonished. Many of these artifacts contained hints at unknown aspects of Hungary's past, including unrecognizable people, languages, and scripts, and strengthened feelings of national pride in Hungary's rich and deepening history. But these artifacts shared a number of features in common. They all had a high volume of crudely drawn pictures. The lengths of the texts themselves were short and were artificially thickened with heavy use of images. And all have since been exposed to be forgeries created in the back room of Nemesh's old curiosity shop. It turned out that Nemesh had been living a double life one as a legitimate antiquarian, and another as a master at forgery. This misdeed was uncovered in 1866, 24 years after Nemesh's death, by Karoi Sabo. Upon analyzing the wooden book from Turok, he discovered that it contained words that did not exist in the age from which it was purported to be written and that the ink and character form more closely resembled work from the 18th century, as opposed to the 14th, as Nemesh had claimed. This prompted inspection of Nemesh's other pseudo-artifacts, and at least 23 of Nemesh's forgeries were discovered and removed from circulation and study. The Hungarian Library of Sciences, gatekeepers of the Rahank Codex, label the book as another of Nemesh's creations, and to this day, this judgment is accepted without contest by the vast majority of Hungarian historians and linguists. Honestly, this is extremely bizarre and questionable academic behavior as there is a strong amount of evidence that the Codex is a legitimate artifact. The most obvious is the fact that the Rahank Codex shows up in a 1743 catalog entry in Batiani's family library as a Hungarian book of prayers, with the dimensions and description being an exact match. This is over half a century before Nemesh was even born. On top of that, Nemesh kept extensive records of his journeys in which all of his forgeries are mentioned but not a word on the Rahank Codex. The contents of the Codex speak toward its authenticity as well. While it's true that there are similarities to Nemesh's forgeries, it is unique in its length and at least ten times as extensive as Nemesh's largest effort. Nor does the Codex make logical sense as a forgery, because the longer a cipher is, the more likely it is to be cracked. If the Codex is not one of Nemesh's forgeries, then what actually is it? While the Rahank Codex has unfortunately been suppressed as a serious artifact worthy of further study and inspection, there have been a number of international historians and linguists who have made an effort to uncover the secrets of the book. Shortly after its discovery in 1838, a Hungarian language historian by the name of Janos Jernai was the first to make a serious attempt at decoding the text. Jernai dated the pages of the manuscript, noting the watermark and confirming the paper as a Venetian product of 16th century Italy, a type of paper common to early modern Hungary. Based on the illustrations, Yerenei concluded that the text was Christian in nature, theorizing that it may have been written by the Tartars who had settled in Hungary in the Middle Ages as Christian converts. As for the script, Yerenei figured that it might have been an unknown and lost Asian language used by the Tartars, although this was little more than speculation. The first published effort at decrypting the Codex came from the eccentric figure Kalman Namati. Namati was an outlaw of academic tradition, completely self-taught, and considered himself the educator of the nation. Namati was even more of an obscure personality than Nemesh, 
spending two years of his life living in an emptied bear cave, dressing only in his underclothes and a handmade monk's garb. He subsisted on a vegetarian diet and spent his time fielding visits from people seeking his lectures in exchange for wheat, fruit, and bread. Nemati was deeply interested in the origins of the Hungarian people and argued that the Rahonk Codex was written in an ancient Hungarian runic script. He was the first to note that the text of the Codex was justified from the right-hand side, meaning that the writing was to be read right to left, as in Eastern tradition. He was also the first to catalog the individual symbols of the Codex, counting over 800 of them. Nemati independently published his findings, and in 1898, he presented his work to the Committee of Linguistics at the Hungarian Academy of Sciences with the hope of procuring a grant for further research. The committee was quick to shoot him down. They argued that, quote, it is impossible to encipher a text using 800 symbols because no man on earth could possibly read such a text not even the person who created it. Handling an alphabet of 800 secret symbols is beyond the capacity of human memory. They added that Mr. Kalman Namati had been wasting his rare tremendous zeal on an impossible task, and that anyone encouraging him to continue this work would do a bad thing to him. And for nearly a century after this meeting, the Hungarian Academy of the Sciences dissuaded any further study of the Codex. Now, before we continue this tale, on the topic of deep study, I do a lot of research for my videos, and that involves a lot of Google searches that my internet service provider may find strange. I'd rather not have my browsing activities, GPS location, and personal data tracked and shared with unknown third parties. So that's why I use Surfshark VPN literally every day, even before they reached out to me for this sponsorship. I've actually been a paying customer for over a year. Surfshark is a one-click solution that encrypts all the data you send through the internet, making your activities an indecipherable code, much like the Rahonk Codex or Voynich Manuscript. Except Surfshark is made by a team of modern security experts, as opposed to an anonymous scribe in the Dark Ages. When you sign up, use my promo code MYTHOS to get 83% off plus 3 months completely free with a 30 day money back guarantee. Simply click my link in the description below. Now back to the mysteries of the Rahonk Codex. Though the physical book remains in the tight grasp of Hungarian authorities, a decent quality microfilm copy was finally released onto the internet which, on top of supplying the images used in this video, has fueled a number of truly mind-boggling theories throughout the last few decades. In 2002, Romanian archaeologist Viorica Enahuic theorized that the Rahonk Codex is written in a lost form of vulgar Latin that appears nowhere else on record and where other scholars interpreted the imagery as being of a Christian and biblical nature, Enahuic saw a retelling of the history of the early Romanian blocky state and their military conquest of Hungary under the charge of Emperor Vlad. In 2004, a journal of Hungarian history published a 20-page translation by the Indian doctor Mahesh Kumar Singh. The chief editor recounted his astonishment at the scholar's apparent ability to read the Rahonk Codex's indecipherable text in unbroken English without stumbling, as if the script were familiar to him. Singh claimed the Codex was written in Sanskrit, using an ancient Brahmi script. Both the Emperor Vlad and Sanskrit theories, of course, were complete hoaxes and the brainchildren of hackjob academics. Genuine progress from serious scholars was made in 2018, published in the journal Cryptologia by software developer Levente Kirai and art historian Gabor Tokai. This paper, the result of decades of independent research, is without a doubt the closest we've ever gotten to unlocking the truth 
of the Rahonk Codex. Their work began separately, where Kirai had digitized the code to perform statistical analysis of the symbols and the structural patterns of the text, while Tokai had focused on an art historical analysis of the codex, in which he found a calendar system that related the dates of the birth and death of Christ as year 5166 and 5199, respectively meaning that the numbers were framed by a culture or author who believed the birth of the universe to have occurred around 5,000 years BC. In 2011, the pair decided to work together. By comparing the script surrounding the biblical iconography to texts from the Bible, and thus creating a picture dictionary, the pair were able to decode their first word, birth in relation to the Codex's description of the Adoration of the Magi. From there, they began to decode other biblical names and nouns, which led to a self-described avalanche of progress. Within two years, the pair had decoded about 400 of the 800 symbols, and had begun to identify the script's syntax, recognizing verbs, nouns, and prepositions. They also made efforts at placing the separated pages of the Codex in order, ultimately concluding that there were around 22 pages missing. By using quotes from the Bible as a Rosetta Stone, the pair were able to recognize coded versions of the Our Father's Prayer, the Prayers to the Virgin Mary, the Institution of the Eucharist, and the Ending to the Gospel of Mark. Nonetheless, the pair admit that their work is far from complete, and they doubt that the Codex will ever be completely solved. And the solution that Kirai and Tokai offer still leaves many questions on the table. If the Rahonk Codex really is just a simple prayer book, why is it written in a cryptic and purposefully difficult script? And why are traditional religious images altered in such bizarre ways? If the book is authentic, why does the Hungarian Academy of Sciences deny this? And might the Codex's missing pages remain amongst the rest of Batiani's donated library, perhaps disappearing on purpose? Leave your theories in the comments below. I'm Mr. Mythos. Thank you for watching. Shout out to my patrons for supporting my work. Regen Thoughts, Problem Goblin, Michael Harris, Late for Tea, Noah Lesham, Succubus GF, Capricorn Studios, Preston, Mad Mouse, and Joshua Bowden.